Gonna be honest, I don't usually put this much thought into painting hair, but maybe I should be. You know what series we haven't touched in a while? Technique tryout. This is a little different to a style study because whereas in style study we take a look at the end product and try to achieve that style, in technique tryouts we actually use the process of some of our favorite artists and see how well they translate to our own painting style. Today's video was requested by one of our Discord members, Breezy, who by the way, it feels like his only job is to roast me. I'm hoping it's out of love but like but um he requested many many moons ago that i try out ross trans video about how to paint hair which was released i think back in 2019 so it's a bit of an old one but it's a bit of a fun one if you enjoyed this video and learned something today then please do remember to like comment and subscribe it helps the channel out so so much and if there are any other techniques you want me to try out you can leave them in a comment below or like breezy has done you can leave them in the discord server the links to everything are in the video description thanks again again breezy for requesting this video i hope it's helpful and that you love it and without much further ado let's dive into another technique tryout featuring ross draws i should start off by saying that ross's video did not have a numbered list his videos generally don't but my primary school brain can't comprehend this so i've decided to put this video down in a step-by-step -step order and today we have a whopping seven steps I know, we'll get through this together. I have a lot of the painting already done today, apart from the hair, which is going to be a pretty big compositional element here. I've got pretty much a diagonal composition so far with the character leading directly to the gigantic hand. So let's go ahead and see how adding the hair changes this. So the very first thing Ross impresses upon us is that the shape is everything. Whatever the color, lighting or texture of the hair, the shape that its silhouette creates is a huge part of your composition. He starts off by roughly sketching in a gorgeous flowy silhouette and flats it in with a base color. Here, like I said, the composition was diagonal, but just having that diagonal is actually going to be quite damaging to our composition. Why? Because your viewer's eyes are just going to dart from one corner of the canvas to the other and fly just right off the painting. We don't want that. We want the viewer to stay on the painting for long enough that it creates some kind of emotion in them. And this is where the hair comes in. While a corner to corner composition is the quickest way to lose your audience, there is a shape that will just as quickly entangle your viewer in the painting. That shape is a cross. Anywhere you have an intersection in a painting is where your viewer gets drawn to instantly. Here we want the attention to go to our character's face. So what we're going to do is use the hair to build an intersection at the face in such a way that the hair forms like the other arm of the cross. We do still want this to be fluid and wavy so we're not actually going to use straight lines for the silhouette. I'm using lots of C curves and some S curves to sketch the outline. And the next thing we're going to do is paint in a flat base under the sketch. You could do this with a brush but I prefer to use a bezier select tool and select around the sketch then fill it in with the bucket pretty straightforward and it's much cleaner in my opinion i also went over and added in some sections in the hair just to help us later on in the process so after step one here's what we have With the shadows, Ross goes from large, light and soft shadows to the tighter, darker and hard-edged ones. He just grabs an airbrush and a slightly darker tone than the flat and places the shadows just straight up. He doesn't actually mention where he places these shadows, which was kind of confusing, but from a quick glance it seems like the shadows lie under each section of hair. So instead of thinking of hair as strands and strands, you want to see them almost like it were flat pieces of silk 
all kinds of layering over each other. So imagine each clump of hair acting as a piece of fabric rather than a clump of hair. Each piece of silk is going to cast a shadow on the piece underneath it, so that's where I'm going to place the big diffuse shadows under each section, aka each piece of silk. Next, he seems to grab a harder edge brush and cleans up some edges. Again, this bit is sped through, but he basically color picked local colors and created harder edges where you would kind of see the edge of a piece of silk head on. So that gives you the illusion of layers in the hair rather than having just a wishy washy airbrush shadow. He then goes ahead and adds the darkest of shadows in pockets where the light just doesn't hit. So think around the face, especially down by the neck, it looks like he sets the brush to some kind of burn blend mode because each brush stroke seems to darken and saturate the shadow. Again, these are hard edge, though the brush does have opacity dynamics. I like this technique of gradually going from soft light shadows to the deeper, more defined ones. Might end up integrating this into my own workflow from here on out. Here's what we have after the shadows are in place. Let's go ahead and brighten things up. This is a bit that he mostly speeds through, but Ross mentioned that he likes to add light by creating a new layer set to soft light. He then grabs a vibrant tone and I'm assuming an airbrush and paints some light on. Again, he doesn't mention where he places them, but I'm guessing you lot are smart enough to gather by looking. I, on the other hand, need an obsessive amount of instruction. So from what I can tell, these lighter colors seem to be placed just before the transition to the shadows. Here's what I mean. In step two, we built shadows gradually, right? We started soft and light and then went darker. What that did was create a transition area from mid-tone to shadow. With the light layer, it looks like he places the light just before this transition area. This is probably to create a bit of a bump before the shadow. We know that anything that is bright stands out, while anything that is dark seems to recede into the shadow. So placing the brighter and darker tones so close close to each other causes the contrast to be even stronger, making the hair look like it's jumping out at you before diving away from you into the shadow. In other words, it really adds dimension. However, be sparing with these highlights and pick a fairly vibrant tone. Paint it on with a light hand though, because it can be so easy to overdo. Here's what we have after step three. Let's now go in and refine. Sammy, you don't have to sit here, honey, it's so hot. Well done, that's a smart choice. This is where things get a little complex because we're going to use some dynamic brushes. Since everything so far is flat and basic, Ross then goes in with a texture brush in order to create hair-like texture. If you're using Critter like I am, there is this amazing brush pack that has similar alphas in both paint and smudge engines, which I will leave a link to down in the description. The smudge engine will come into play later on in this video. For now though, we're just gonna grab a texture brush that puts down color and add in some texture. He also mentioned a great tip and that is to paint along the direction of the hair, that way it looks smoother. Again, he speeds through this, so I'm just gonna give you my best advice on where to place this hair stroke texture. Go for the mid-tone between your brightest and darkest hair tones. So I'm gonna color pick and pull the texture a little bit into the highlight and a little bit into the shadow, but mostly in the mid-tone. We're not gonna go all the way across because even though we are using a texture brush, it is gonna make everything look too flat. We don't wanna lose all that beautiful dimension we created in the last couple of steps do we? I'll link a video up here where I go deeper into why this area 
here would reflect texture because we're not here for my tips we're here for Ross's so check that out if you like after this so anyway I've gone ahead and placed the texture right at the midtones so that it suggests hair without being overt here's what it looks like with the added texture let's now go ahead and create some magic Okay, if you've made it this far, you're doing well. Let's go. So there's a couple of tweaks Ross suggests making at this stage, starting with his number one tip on instantly improving hair, and that is to use curves adjustment. He makes a ton of little tangent points, so really the takeaway here is to use the curves to make a whole bunch of little alterations to the hair. He then creates a new overlay layer to do another light and shadow pass. Still using an airbrush, we're just gonna go through and intensify the the highlights and the shadows and then of course it is color dodge time it looks like he actually sets the brush to color dodge here rather than having a layer set to color dodge so i'm gonna assume he went ahead and flattened the layers first or that is what i'm gonna do anyway because my brain doesn't like too many layers some of us are old school okay but it seems here that he's still using a large airbrush and just very gently adding a little bit of color dodge in like a stripe across the body of the hair. He makes it a point to really saturate the color too, so you're getting a really vibrant light. Then, and this is one I caught by complete accident by pausing at just the right time, it looks like he lowers the brush size and does some color dodge strands of hair too, following the flow of the rest of the hair. He then does another refining pass, making sure that there aren't any weird shapes or tangents I assume, and he also goes through and blends areas that may be way too noisy. This is also where he goes through and cleans up a lot of the strands of hair, and although it is sped up, I'd say a lot of this refining process is the real meat and potatoes of painting the hair. The steps so far have been incredible for laying down a solid foundation, but I would say you should spend about 20 minutes to half an hour at this stage using your visual library, muscle memory, and artistic judgment to just make a bunch of design choices here. I wish there was a specific order of steps to refining hair that I could tell you, but it's such a variable process. However, However, I do have a few tips with refinement, but again, not for this video, this is about Roz. But yeah, after all the VFX and refinement, we have two more steps to go. Now, Ross, of course, uses Photoshop, which has the mixer brush tool, and based on watching him do this step, it appears that he has the brush set to 0% load, because it doesn't seem to be putting down any color. But the alpha is basically a hairbrush alpha, which creates smeared strands of the colors underneath. So I'm just going to use one of the smudge brushes from that hair pack that I mentioned to create the same effect. I don't usually use these, mostly because the alpha is hard to control, but it was definitely a look. He uses this to create more hair texture and more importantly to make it so the values and colors conform to the direction of hair flow. So he generally sticks to following the line of each hair section, just making sure everything is smooth and fluid. I especially love this brush around the silhouette, especially where the hair kind of bends and turns because it pulls the paint out and gives you this fluffy, almost fly away hair look. He then goes ahead with a more rounded brush alpha still smudging and uses this to actually get rid of the excess texture remember you guys you want the texture to stand out and in order to do that it needs to have a counterbalance so you do need some areas of the hair to not have any texture so that the areas that do have it really pop the smudge brush i'm using here came from fizzy flowers essential 180 plus brush set for critter which is a free download off of gumroad i will link the pack in the description below these are honestly the best critter smudge brushes i've ever used and i cannot recommend them enough but yeah i'm using the rounder smudge brush to smooth out some of that texture focusing on smoothing the areas directly around the texture that i do want to draw focus to after step six here's what we've got Thank you. 
And finally, we actually go in and paint some strands. This is an important concept, and I'm glad Ross mentioned it in his video because it's so easy to forget. But the actual strand details are to hair what specular highlights are to the eyes. They add a ton of life and realism, but are actually a very minuscule part of the process. It looks like he uses a line art brush of some sort. So I went for a fountain pen brush here. It's basically a flat round alpha with 100% opacity but the pressure is linked to size so the harder you press the thicker the line I specifically do this on a new layer of its own because that way I can do all the lines with any random color and then lock transparency and paint over it to shade the stray hairs. I like to do areas of highlight and shadow within the strays with an airbrush which gives them a lot of dimension rather than just looking like flat curves. This is a pretty straightforward technique so here's what we have after the final hair step. And then I went about painting the rest of the scene, refining and adding effects. I'm gonna be honest, you guys, I legit thought this painting was gonna be scrapped just because I wasn't a huge fan of the colors or lighting. However, thanks to the encouragement from Noi, I hope I said that right, on Discord, I ended up just stepping away from the painting for a bit and then coming back to it with fresh eyes. I changed the entire color scheme, banged on some photo texture and threw in a bunch of color adjustments. And what do you know, it actually turned out pretty good. So here is this week's painting, The Birth of Gaia. So what do you think? Personally, I really enjoyed the video and I enjoyed the process, but then again, I'm really easy to impress. Um, so will you be trying this technique out? Is it too many steps or will it actually make your workflow easier? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, please remember to like this video and hit that subscribe button so I know to make more of these. And if you'd like to support the channel, I have a whole bunch of ways in the description now, including a PayPal tip chat if you feel so inclined. But if you do want more bang for your bug you can always check out my patreon all of the links are in the video description below thanks so much again to breezy for requesting this video i hope it's been everything you've been dreaming of and please stop roasting me every single day please um, but if this is your very first technique tryout video i will leave a link to the entire playlist up here in the video description they're all really good you can feel free to binge them you'll learn a lot from every single one of them i promise and with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and i'll see you guys on the next one bye